Starfleet was a puppet show that ran on the UK's ITV from 1980 to 1981, created by Go Nagai and Kimio Ikeda. The series begins in the year 2999, following the end of humanity's last great space war. We open on an alien battleship, led by the Imperial Alliance's Commander Makara, as it launches an attack on a military outpost on Pluto. Captain Carter sends a transmission to Earth Defense Force, warning them of the attack, just before the entire base is destroyed. In response, the EDF selects three pilots from the Starfleet Academy, all of whom train directly under Captain Carter, and brings them to Earth's moon base. Here, we're introduced to our main characters. Space Pilot Hagen, sir. Welcome. Space Pilot John Lee. Hope you like it here. And I'm Barry Hercules, Doc. I want to note that the names are different in the Japanese version, but I prefer the English names since they just sound better. To prove my point, in Japanese, Shiro Hagen is Shiro Ginga, John Lee is Bigman Lee, and Barry Hercules is the possibly somewhat racist Bongo Heracles. Also, Captain Carter is Captain Custer, and if you ever forgot this was a Go Nagai show, Commander Makara is Bloody Mary, the Emissary of Death. Once on Moonbase, the cadets are introduced to Dr. Ben, a scientist working on a secret project called Project X. We soon learn that Project X is the giant robot, Dyak, that is formed by combining three individual ships by way of mid-air conversion, similar to Get a Robo. Commander Makara reveals that the Imperial Alliance is in search of a great power called F-01, prophesized to bring a great change to the universe at the start of the year 3000, and thus begins the next great space war between mankind and the Imperial Alliance. Starfleet was an homage to Jerry Anderson's puppet shows of the 60s, like Thunderbirds and Stingray. Since those shows were made in England in the 60s, they drew heavily from 60s spy serials. On the other hand, Go Nagai's Starfleet was produced in Japan and made in 1980, which is why it draws more heavily from Star Wars and Get a Robo. If this base is taken, the next victim is the Earth. We must hold out! Sir, Luke is the best pushed pilot in the Outer Rim territories. It's important to know that since Anderson took heavy influence from live-action works, the faces of the puppets were designed to look like live-action actors, giving them this creepy, uncanny valley effect. If they wanted to make live-action films, Jerry Anderson hated being associated with puppets. He'd film them like people, give them close-ups, give them mid-shots. Since Go Nagai was a comic book artist, the characters in Starfleet have a more simplified, cartoonish look to them, adding a lot to the visual appeal of the show. Starfleet can be a hard sell to someone despite its creator and influences, because shows like Thunderbirds and Stingray don't really hold up. They have impressive special effects, but they were aired in the 60s before the age of reruns and home videotapes. That means they're incredibly episodic and have no character development. Because of that, we see very simple characters involved in similar plots carrying similar themes throughout. Starfleet excels because it takes the spectacle of Anderson's shows and incorporates them into an all-encompassing story, with an interesting plot and a surprising amount of character development. Since the original soundtrack for X-Bomber was done by a Japanese metal band called Bow Wow, this meant it was actually cheaper for ITV to produce their own in-house soundtrack rather than license the existing one. To the show's credit though, the new soundtrack is actually more fitting to the series, and the English episode scripts are essentially unedited from the Japanese version. Starfleet has tons of action, including the on-screen death of several characters, but because these scenes don't show blood and are all acted out through puppets, they had no problem getting it through the censors. Starfleet is flawed though, and unfortunately all the flaws seem to stem from the same place. That being that the show was constantly losing money as it was being produced. Starfleet is 24 episodes long, and of those 24 episodes, two are flashback episodes. One of which accidentally ruins the continuity of the series. Episode 9 is the first flashback episode, and it opens with Commander Makara being prepped for execution by way of guillotine. Makara begs the Imperial Master for forgiveness, explaining why she was unsuccessful, and why she's the only one capable of completing the job. Episode 13 is the second clip show, and I highly suggest you skip this one. Unlike the previous clip show episode that at least opened with a great scene of Makara being taken for execution, this one opens on the team celebrating New Year's and reflecting on their past. The problem is that the series starts in the year 2999, and F-01 is supposed to reveal its true powers at the beginning of the year 3000. At the end of the series, it's revealed that it's still the year 2999, with F-01 finally revealing its powers in the final episode, which is New Year's of the year 3000. Episode 18 of Starfleet is actually different depending on if you're watching the Japanese or English version. That's because the English version completely removed what the Japanese version had as episode 18. And the reason is because in Japanese, episode 18 was a third flashback episode. The episode added absolutely nothing to the story and was so pointless they removed it due to redundancy. For the scenes in outer space, the show's mecha Dyax was portrayed using a toy. However, for the scenes when it's on a planet, it's portrayed using a suit actor, similar to the Megazords and Power Rangers. Unfortunately, they couldn't afford to use the suit as much as they wanted to, as it would require building several life-size sets equipped with tons of miniatures. Early on, it's revealed that the Imperial Master that Commander Makara is working for is actually a giant, and he's portrayed by a suit actor just like the robot. 
Once I saw this, I knew the series had to end with a fist fight between the Imperial Master and the Dyax. The show's finale is built up to even make you think that that's what's going to happen. Unfortunately, we never get to see this fight, and it's most likely due to budget constraints. Studios like Toei and Toho, who make big name franchises like Super Sentai, Kamen Rider, Godzilla, and Ultraman, can afford to create large sets and usually wind up reusing lots of props and suits. However, Jin Productions was making all of their props from scratch as they were needed. This is a result of the dwindling budget and outrageous cost to produce the show, which is also why they had to use so many flashback episodes. It sounds weird that Go Nagai, the man that dominated anime and comics in the 70s, would run into budgetary issues like this, but there's actually an interesting history behind it. In 1976, Toei created a new anime called Gai King. Gai King was very similar to the types of giant robot shows Go Nagai had created for them in the past, like Mazinger and Steel Jeep. Go Nagai came out and claimed that he created Gai King, and that Toei stole the concept because they didn't want to pay him the royalties. This led to a court case that lasted for 10 years and resulted in Go Nagai and Toei having a falling out. This falling out is the reason why you see a surplus of Go Nagai works in the 70s, while throughout the 80s and 90s, his works mostly just got produced as short OVAs. Sometime in the 2000s though, Go Nagai and Toei did bury the hatchet, and they recently worked together on the latest Mazinger movie, Mazinger Z Infinity. As I mentioned earlier, Starfleet did poorly in Japan, but it was incredibly successful in the UK. Brian May, the guitarist for Queen, even did a cover of the theme song. According to interviews from the British staff, May reached out to them and said that he and his son had been watching Starfleet every Saturday morning, and that he wanted to do a cover of the theme as a gift to him. The show was already completely produced at this time, so they were unable to incorporate the song into the show, but they were still able to use the cover for trailers and promotional videos. <laughs> スタッフ<笑> Starfleet went on to do so well in the UK that the English producers reached out to the Japanese studio and offered to fund more episodes. The Japanese team was excited about the opportunity. Unfortunately, a special effects accident started a fire and destroyed a majority of the props sometime earlier. Starfleet was released on DVD by Discotech Media in 2017. The release had a decent amount of special features, including interviews with the British producers, as well as a subtitled interview with Go Nagai. Starfleet is an excellent show that I would recommend to any fan of mecha, space operas, or even just science fiction in general. And with the rise of popularity of Devilman as of late, Starfleet is a great place to start for anyone looking to dive into the works of Go Nagai.